Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which comes to us from Cambridge University Press. And I think it's a very important international law book. It's called International Arbitration. It's an area that I'm very, very um, partly involved in at the moment, but I think it's going to grow. I'm a mediator as well as a barrister at law, and therefore it's an area that I think will become of greater significance in the future. And it was a book this book certainly was one that got my attention. It's now in a second edition. The subtitle is Three Salient Problems uh, Looking at International Arbitration. And they come up with some very interesting points to the, the, the writers. They are Stephen M. Schwab, Schwebel. I hope I pronounced the, the name correctly, Stephen. I apologise if I haven't. Uh, Luke Sabota and Ryan Manton. Um, the, this is part of a series of lectures given by the Hirsch Lauterpacht Memorial Lectures series, which are mentioned at the top there, and Cambridge University Press have, have brought them all together. And I think it's a very interesting book, it's one that I certainly thought would be well worth reviewing. I've given it a relatively simple title for the book review. Three Important Principles of International Arbitration Reassessed. But because that's really what you've got here. And I, I as I say, I thought it was a very interesting book. Um, because arbitration is, is an interesting area. There's the front of the book. It's a hardback. There's the spine. And then you can see there's some quotes on the back about the work itself uh, from some very eminent people. Just going to the back of the book, the, um, there's an index, shortish index. Could be a bit bigger, perhaps. It's got page numbering on um, for the index. As I said, it's not a particularly big index at all. I probably could could do with a bit of expansion. Then after that, you've got the actual um, the actual body text, and you can see even from the back, you've got footnoting, you've got paragraph numbering by um, letters rather than numbers, and you do have um, individual. Uh, footnotes at the back there. Now at the front of the book, let's go to the front, you can see the series listed here. This is the um, recent books in the Memorial Lectures series. Then you've got the actual front page, then you've got uh, the blurb there, and then you've got the actual content section of the book itself. It's um, very substantial. It's not a book for beginners at all. There's a lot of very substantial detail, a lot of case law involved as well, and as you can see it runs all the way through. And you've got um, three basic parts uh, to the, um, the book itself. Then there's a preface to the second edition. It's been a popular work, this one, so you can see how important it is. Then you've also got after that uh, some case law, which is mentioned, and after that we get into the book itself, um, which is there. You can see chapter one starting off there. That's the severability of the arbitration agreement and the question going into question that the first edition asked was where a contract or a treaty provides for arbitration of disputes that arise thereunder, does the invalidity, termination, nullification or suspension of the contract or treaty vitiate the arbitral objection, uh, obligations of the parties? So you've got a, f a fairly good mission statement right at the beginning. Then going into the middle of the book, you can see the footnoting that's there. Now, what do I say about the book? Well, I say this. <clears throat> it's based upon the um, hirsch Lauterpatch Memorial Lectures from 1987. Uh, they covered international arbitration, and the book itself has been published by the uh, CUP, Cambridge University Press. It's now in its second edition. It's, been pop it's a popular book. And the three salient problems which are highlighted in the original work have been edited by three experts who I've mentioned before, Stephen uh, Schwebel, uh, Luke Sabota and Ryan Manton. <coughs> the preface is written by Schwebel, who, begins his le who, who began his lectures some 30 years ago now. There's a common thread which was explored in the first edition, namely the vitality or in the alternative vitiation of the international arbitral process. The editors rightly say that this thread is no less pressing a subject today than it was some three decades ago. And in fact, if anything, it's probably more important because I do see mediation as, as part of ADR 
um, and arbitration as part of ADR becoming much more prevalent this century because it, it's, it's because of the sheer costs of mounting main litigation. That's one of the problems. Also, it's a, a different process by which you still probably arrive at the same result at the end. But it's, uh, as I say, it's a diff different way. Now, um, Schwebel considers that, quote, much progress has been made in enhancing the vitality of arbitration. His justification is, in his words, that there has been an explosion of interstate, investor state and international commercial arbitration. Although the three issues identified all those years ago in 1987 continue to persist. And of course the book has three parts to cover the, the, uh, these points. Of course the first part covers what is called the severability of the arbitration agreement. And this term means <coughs> the cornerstone principle, if I can explain it, of international arbitration, which is viewed as more firmly established today than, it, than certainly it had been in the past. However, participants do from time to time call that principle into question. The purpose is an attempt to vitiate the arbitral process by the invocation of a supposed defect, that's the excuse, if I can put it bluntly, um, in the underlying contract or treaty, with difficult issues remaining over the precise scope and limits of this principle. And that's the starting off point. The second part then looks at what is called denial of justice and other breaches of international law by governmental negation of arbitration. The practice highlighted here um, reviews governmental evasion and negation of arbitration, which can take various differing forms. The question raised in this updated edition is not only whether a state's refusal to arbitrate may constitute a denial of justice, but also the attempt to negate arbitration, such as setting aside awards, might constitute what is described as a compensatable expropriation of property rights, a breach of fair and equitable treatment, or another breach of an investment treaty. You can see they're trying to wriggle out of what's being agreed. This happens. This is one of the problems that can be a difficulty in ADR. And that's why I think this book is quite helpful, because the authors are looking very much at these, what they call these three salient problems. The third one, that's the final part, examines what's called the authority of truncated international arbitral tribunals. You know what that means. It's be before proceedings to issue a final award take place, the matter stopped. The jurisprudence in this area has developed, in our view, quite significantly because the editors consider the trend towards judicial rather than diplomatic arbitration has been largely the result of a series of decisions by the Iran United States Claims Tribunal and, quote, the confrontation of this problem in arbitral rules because you can see, again, the flavour of what the problem is. The uh, editors, the, the writers, conclude that there is a discernible preference amongst tribunals, institutions and scholars to replace the obstructionist arbitrator and obviate the need for a truncated tribunal. Because if you think about it, it, it ends in basically in a for, form of stalemate. It's, it's dissatisfaction at the end of what should be a satisfying process where the parties have finally recognised what the sense is to, um, to end or resolve a dispute which has taken place. Now that's the basis of what we try to do in mediation anyway, and it's the same in ar arbitration uh, where, where, where the approach is, is similar in terms of ADR. Let me conclude by saying this. An important conclusion drawn is that the identified trends aim now to fortify international arbitration against unilateral attempts to derail the proceedings for the reasons cited in the book. I think it's an excellent new edition from Cambridge University Press, which is both searching and uh, perspective, and it's meticulous for the advanced student who may be researching international arbitration. And I found it interesting from a slightly different point of view as, as more of a practitioner it gave me some idea of, of, of where we are and also it introduced me to some of the cases that I didn't know much about because there, are, there is some case that's quite useful. The publication date of this hardback second edition is cited as at the 1st of January 
2020. Let's just have a look at it again. There's the hardback there. There's the back um, and then the side and then the back, spine on the back. Just looking at it again, you can see um, that quite a lot of cases are mentioned. Obviously, they're they're mentioned in a certain um, in a certain way. Um, obviously, there will be a, there are a lot of European cases naturally. And just opening it in the middle, you've got again. You can see not too much footnoting, which I think is helpful. And you've also got quite a lot of detail there. And there is as I say, quite a lot of useful information looking at the uh, various different jurisdictions and they do have quite a lot of interesting case law. There's one here. This is the uh, Delagoa Bay Railroad case, um, which is mentioned again, Portuguese. You've again got quite a lot of information there at the bottom um, and sometimes you get a little bit more just to assist. All in all, I'm very pleased with this book and I'm very grateful to CUP for asking me to review it. A uh, big thank you to all the people involved and I hope it helps you with whatever type of work you're doing, whether it be professional or uh, research work. Thank you to all. Bye-bye.